Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. So my name is John Hurst um, with Google Cloud, uh, Data Analytics and AI. Uh, I've been with Google about four years now. Uh, I also previously to that worked for AWS for about four years covering the same area. So if my name's familiar or face, uh, for those of you that can see me in person, uh, which I'm loving actually having in person things again, uh, that could be why. So I've been around quite a bit, uh, mostly focused in this data analytics space. Uh, and today what I want to talk about is actually one of our newest products we released at our Data Cloud Summit called Big Lake. Um, and a lot of this, we, we saw a need just with a lot of things that, that Google builds very um, specific to a need that we saw not only in ourselves, but also everywhere across the industry. Um, the amount of data is growing tremendously and it's, it's a bit out of control. Uh, with some stats here, just uh, we expect 163 zettabytes uh, of data by 2025, which is 10x more than what we had in 2014. Uh, it's not only growing tremendously, it's also distributed across multiple places. Um, and that can be for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, different methodologies to have uh, certain, you know, raw data sets versus a gold data set or uh, something that's in transit or just you have it in different systems. You may have it inside of a Hadoop infrastructure or inside of your data warehouse. You may have it inside of a data lake. Uh, all these things really kind of give their own issue with the amount of data that's stored everywhere. Um, and kind of going through the entire, you know, the, the business needs over time and kind of where this value of why we have all this data and what it's there for. Um, there's a lot of different business use cases across every industry of why we need data. So Back in the early 2000s, maybe even before this, you know, we started with the on-prem data warehouse, which is really just kind of relational databases, uh, to be honest. And then moving, you know, 2010s, we got into data lakes with uh, HDFS and Hadoop frameworks, um, which Google contributed to that th those projects as well. Um, again, a lot of this was around scale. If you think of, of the Google services like YouTube, Google Search, things like that, they they needed these uh, these services, so they're kind of leading that charge with it. Uh, and then now in 2022, we're looking at, you know, especially as a, a cloud provider, we want you to put everything in your data warehouses um, and any, you know, again, Hadoop implementations, all the major cloud providers have their own services around that. Whatever you can do to put your data somewhere that's easy for your business users or your tech users, whoever the audience is, to get to it and start analyzing. Um, now, where you get into uh, those different use cases could be problematic. Um, so every organization has a ton of data and there's always analytics that you feel like you can get more and more out of. If we just have all the data there, we'll figure it out later. Uh, so this is where it kind of becomes into, you know, separate systems and creating their own issues. You may have some of the data warehouse um, and you may have some of the metadata sitting inside of like a SQL database or, you know, no SQL database. Um, you know, may have some in a data lake where you're just dumping in all kinds of raw data um, you, you may have some, like I said, inside of a Hadoop framework um, where you're also doing some ETL work and things like that. So what we want to do with, with uh, Big Lake is break down all those silos where we have everything separated in all these different places, give you one interface and one layer of management where you can actually get to all of those things through one specific uh, system as the source. So Big Lake is, it's categorized as a storage engine uh, it also gives the, that API layer just sitting on top of all of these different systems that you could have. So, and this also uh, kind of our, our, our big use case with this as well is to go multi-cloud. So your, your data could be sitting in, I always mention BigQuery because it's Google Cloud product. Uh, it could be, you know, also in Google Cloud Storage inside your data lake, could be an S3 on AWS, could be an Azure data lake. Uh, we have BigQuery Omni that can run inside of uh, those cloud providers as well to operate in the same manner. So this can span across not only your different services within Google Cloud, but also the other cloud providers as well. So with that, you can have still the same, you know, different file and table formats, uh, you know, supports different systems. And, um, you know, you can come in through different interfaces. Typically, you know, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is if your front end interface is BigQuery. Uh, underneath that, you'll have, uh, you know, you could have your data lake with Parquet files. Uh, you could have tables inside of your data warehouse inside of BigQuery. Uh, the other thing you can have is any other system. So as I mentioned, if you have Spark uh, running on Dataproc or your own cluster, um, AI workloads with TensorFlow, 
to be able to get to this. Since it's an API layer sitting on top, you no longer need to pull all this data into one place to start doing your work. You can actually just go to it where it is. And your interface is just going to interact with it no matter where the data is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to pull it in and it have two copies of it. Um, and, and the term I heard mentioned in the last presentation with cloud sprawl, very similar in, in storage space, you know, inside the cloud, you know, multiple copies everywhere. You don't know how much you have where, and you're just getting charged for all that each time. Um, so you can see here this, you know, a bit of a, a flywheel mechanism where we see Big Lake kind of owning all of your data, no matter where it is, different systems able to come in and unlock the analytics. Um, and not only, you know, I mentioned some of those from a uh, cloud perspective, you know, BigQuery or Spark, Presto, you could have your BI engine coming in there as well, whether that's Looker, MicroStrategy, um, you know, any of those, and also the SaaS tools. So you can also point those in as well if you are reporting directly from Shopify, uh, Workday. We, we know a lot of different partners in here that, that can connect directly into this. Um, and the other nice feature of this is all of the data governance and security is managed within one layer within inside of Big Lake. So you can have your same, uh, you know, column level security, row level security, all those same rules can apply, but it will apply holistically across the entire data set that you have inside of Big Lake. You won't have to go into each different system to manage all of those aspects. Um, and these, I, I kind of already went through, it's a bit, it's a bit repetitive with some of these and I talk really fast. So if you have a question, definitely stop me and ask me at any point. Um, like I said, you, you gives you the interoperability between warehouses and data lakes, no matter where the data is, you can get to it. It's just one source to say, go get it. Don't have to copy it and recreate it each time. Uh, the security and governance can be the fine grain access controls, um, as well as the performance that you get from this. So. If you're coming in, you know, let's say it's through BigQuery, we can actually put in the, uh, you know, time intervals to allow the data to only, you know, the, the staleness factor to only be one hour uh, before it gets refreshed because BigQuery will, will recache all your data. So, um, and again, multi-cloud, you can expand BigQuery out to uh, AWS or Azure using BigQuery Omni, still functions in the same way. And one of the key factors here is that I see a lot of customers use this um, where their data science team will have their own specific use case, very, very small and in, in whatever project that may be. And they want to copy in their own data that they pull in from multiple sources to, to look at it in their own way. Um, you know, there's always like one unicorn project inside of data science that requires all these copies and, and pipelines and everything to be set up. So it's really a great use case to be able to use any sort of machine learning or AI when you're coming in through your own, uh, you know, your, your own VMs to get in there or using Vertex AI notebooks, uh, whatever that may be. You're just going to the data instead of going and grabbing the data, pulling it into that system that you're using. And this is, if you're looking at this just from a Google Cloud perspective, like the services you would use inside Google Cloud to get there, Again, BigQuery is going to already have some of your data warehouse storage and, and your, your data from that can also be your front end user interface. Uh, it's just, you know, SQL front end. And Dataproc is our uh, managed Hadoop. And you can use any of the, you know, any of the open source engines if you have Spark or, or Presto running specifically on containers. Uh, data flow for using all of your data pipelines to get data moved to and from. Uh, Dataplex and data catalog is more of your governance and data management. So this is where you're going to understand your security and also just where is the data that I need. Uh, both GCP services uh, out of the box. Uh, some of the key features, I, I mentioned the, the fine grain control. So um, row and column level security. The other thing is data masking for um, specific tables. A great examples like PII data. You may have uh, whatever users or specific roles that you don't want access to PII data. So we can mask that. Um, and again, all in one interface, you don't have to go to BigQuery and say, find, this, find these roles, find these rules, then interpret here. Um, it's all in one place to, to do that across if you have specific fields that you want to designate as PII or just overall mask these fields. Uh, Multi-compute analytics. 
So this is where you can um, have any compute engine, if, if you will, that actually runs your queries. BigQuery has its own serverless architecture behind it to, to go and run your queries on that specific data. Uh, if you're using Spark on a compute instance, you're using that to go in to get your data. You're just looking at the storage mechanism of wherever it is. And again, multi-cloud, I have said this a lot, this is very repetitive for this. Uh, S3, Azure Data Lake, and you can run BigQuery Omni on either of those services. Uh, really, you're just taking the, the overall uh, product of BigQuery, running that in another cloud on their storage platform. You can take Big Lake over there with that as well um, and, and do the same thing. So performance acceleration, uh, and I actually have a little example here. I'll show that in a second. Uh, in, in the open formats. So you can have various different file formats to run here uh, in any, just like any data lake. You could have CSV, Parquet, Avro, uh, whatever, you know, database, just tables, uh, JSON files, things like that. Um, and so you can do this from directly inside of the console or, you know, like most, once it starts to scale, you want to do this through the command line interface, uh, very simple commands, create, create an external table. What you're really doing inside a big lake is just saying you're, you're pointing to where does this lake exist? Uh, is it in, you know, storage buckets? And then I want to create tables within those storage buckets to say, um, you know, here's what I'm looking at. Here's the file format. And from there, th this kind of gives another view of that where you're looking at the multiple systems that can be used to get in through it. Um, and the big lake storage APIs is really, that's what sits underneath everything. It gives the openness and the flexibility to use whatever system your users are already going into. Uh, you may have business users that are coming in through BigQuery. Uh, or their, their BI tools coming in through BigQuery, which then you know kind of adds that other layer to get down to Big Lake. You may have technical users that are sitting inside of Spark uh, or TensorFlow or notebooks and can get directly into the data without needing to copy and manage all of that um, overspend and just over complexity that adds to it. Um, and like I said, the a lot of the security issues that could come up with that as well. Um, Again, just sort of another, another view, a little prettier with some more colors, uh, using Looker kind of as the example for you know, the BI engine looking at this. Um, and then again, if you have your big lake tables can connect out to BigQuery Omni sitting on other clouds, uh, very standard at this point to have a lot of enter enterprises not only have, um, you know, they may have a data lake for their e-commerce platform sitting over in AWS, but they have all of their customer data platforms sitting in GCP or Azure. Uh, again, you've just got the connectors there to be able to go to wherever that data is and, and use it as is, rather than needing to consolidate and bring it all to one. Uh, and this is for the performance acceleration. So you can set, in this example, just set the max staleness uh, of a table uh, to one hour. So if you do have something like streaming data or anything that, that could be updated in a certain interval that you want to go in and uh, and update so that way you know you're getting the top performance out of it. Uh, like I said, if you're coming in through BigQuery, you have you can use the caching feature that's built into it, so your performance of your queries over time uh, get better and better. And that's it. 